Hey guys, Chris from Propel here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Risa Mueller Tinker. This particular model is the Risa Mueller Tinker Vario. The Tinker really works well for a variety of users. Some people like it because of its small size and maybe it's a smaller person. This bike can actually fit rider under five feet, but it can also fit a rider over six feet. So it's quite cool and very versatile in that way. Sometimes it's people sharing it. Maybe it's an extra bike that they're sharing with family members. Uh, for us in New York City, especially where space is constrained, having a smaller bike is quite popular. So when most people first look at this bike, they think maybe it's like a kid's bike or something like that. It's pretty small, but actually it feels really like a full size bike. That's because of the way it's designed. This is what would be considered a compact electric bike because of the 20 inch wheels. Now the bike really starts with the frame. So it's an aluminum frame and Risa Mueller is really known for having very heavy duty frames. They don't really skimp on materials and they make sure that everything they build is solid. It has a suspension fork in the front. We'll talk a bit about that. And then 20 inch wheels front and rear. But some of the things that make this bike a little bit different than some other compact bikes is some of the adjustability and the overall comfort. A lot of that really comes from the handlebar and stem setup, the overall geometry of the bike. Now keep in mind, Risa Mueller actually started as a company with a compact bike, more specifically a folding bike called the Birdie. And I think this bike really takes some inspiration from that, but it's definitely a completely different bike altogether. So the Tinker is very adjustable. A lot of that comes down to the stem. So there are several positions so if you see, there's actually like a quick release lever here. So this can go up and down to several different positions. There's a little button here, you push the button down and you could lock it in to some different positions here. Right now, I kind of keep it at the higher position. This helps to give me a relatively upright positioning on the bike. And I find that to be really comfortable, especially when I'm riding around the city, I want to have really good visibility and have my head held up you know, looking straight ahead. There's actually some additional adjustments as well. And one of them is the angle of the stem. So you can actually uh, use this little uh, lock here. So you open up these levers and you pull this back and it can go one more position forward. It was kind of in a middle setting right here. That's how I just had it. And it can actually go one more back like this and then we just tighten these levers. So this would actually be the most upright. It's probably a little bit too far back for me, but if, if there was a shorter rider, if you drop this down and put it back, it could work quite well. There's one last thing that you can actually do with the, with the handlebars. And this is really great for storage where you can actually fold the handlebars all the way down. So the Tinker comes standard with a rigid seat post, but this happens to have the optional Cane Creek Thudbuster seat post. Now this is a suspension seat post and it offers a little bit of compliance uh, compared to the rigid version. So it's a nice little upgrade. You might wanna consider the Cirrus Connect seat post. It's a little bit more money, but in my experience, it's a much better post. It offers a little bit more adjustability and you could really fine tune it to your individual riding style and to your weight. So as with the handlebars, the bike also has a quick release for the seat post. And this makes it really nice as I shared before, sometimes people are sharing the bike between different riders. Now keep in mind, there is a minimum insertion point on the seat post. So you don't wanna go up too high and you need that line to always be inside. Um, and this currently is the lowest position. If you did want to go lower, it technically is possible, but it would require the seat post to be cut. And the Sander saddle is the Cell Royale look-in saddle, and it's got really pretty modern lines to it. It's a gel saddle, so it's relatively comfortable. Most people are pretty happy with the standard saddle, but you can always swap it out to pretty much any size. So now starting with the front of the bike, you could see it's a relatively small wheel. It's a 20 inch by 2.15. So this is a Schwabi Big Ben Plus. 
Schwabi makes a variety of tires. This tire is specifically rated for e-bikes. It's the plus tire, so it has extra puncture protection. And it's also what's called a balloon tire. And because it's a balloon tire, it's able to run at a slightly lower tire pressure, which can give you a lot of added comfort as well as some additional traction. So this tire is good for urban environment. If you're gonna do a little bit off-road, uh, that'll work well also, but if you're going rougher trails, you might want to get something with a little bit more tread to it. We have a standard quick release front axle on this bike, and it has a spinner grind OS fork. It's about 50 millimeters of travel, and this is a coil spring fork, so it's pretty plush, and you do have adjustability. If you look here, this is what you're gonna adjust the preload here. So we just turn this knob to the right and it's gonna make it firmer. And if you want it a little bit softer, you can go to the left uh, and just adjust that one side. So it makes it really easy to adjust and it's very low maintenance. You also have nice fenders. Now these are gonna be on the front and the rear of the bike, the SKS fenders, really uh, pretty durable. And in the rear, we have the same 20 inch by 2.15 Schwabi Big Ben Plus tires. Now this bike's the Vario, so that means it comes with the Enviolo hub. So this is the Enviolo hub, and actually inside the hub are all the gears. But it's not really the gears in the traditional sense. This is what's called a CVT, or Continually Variable Transmission. It's a 380% gear range, so uh, it's relatively wide gear range. And there's no specific indexes. So an index would be like you have a 10 speed derailleur and each speed is a specific index. Now in this, you might have a similar range as a 11 or so speed derailleur. However, there's no steps in between. So you can almost think of it as you can adjust from one to 1.1, 1 1.2 to two, etc. So one of the great things about the internal hub is you can use a belt drive. So instead of a chain, this uses a belt. And the nice thing about the belt is there's no grease, uh, really low maintenance. I mean, these things really last a long time. And inside the, this belt, there's actually carbon. So it's not just like a rubber belt. There's actually carbon inside of here. And that's actually what gives it strength. It's a Gates carbon belt drive. And there's two cogs, front and rear. And one of the things you might notice with this cog is it seems like maybe it's relatively small, but actually it's the equivalent of this size times 2.5 uh, because inside the Bosch motor, there's a reduction gear. So every time you rotate the cranks, it actually rotates this cog two and a half times. That allows the motor to spin really fast and that's really where, where it operates most efficiently. It's able to turn the power on and off relatively quickly. This bike happens to have the Bosch Performance Line CX motor, which is generally found on mountain bikes, but Risa Mueller chose to spec it on this bike, as they do with many of their bikes, because it's one of the highest torque offerings that they have. So it's 75 Newton meters of torque, it's a 20 mile an hour top speed. These are kind of the main factors that define this specific variation of the Bosch motor. With the Bosch motor, we have the Power Pack 500. Now this is the battery, so this is where we're actually getting power for the motor. This is a 500 watt hour battery. It's 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours. It's quite a large pack in a relatively small size. The Power Pack 500 generally is gonna get you between 25 and 75 miles. You can charge the battery on the bike here or optionally, you can also remove the battery and charge it off the bike. With the same key that you use to remove the battery, you can also use on the frame lock in the rear. And there's an option to add a chain to the frame lock if you wanted to secure it to something. That generally is not uh, the most secure lock for all places, say in the States, but it's a good starting point and for quick lockups works quite well. The Tinker comes standard with this rack time rack with a 45 pound weight capacity. It's a rack time compatible rack, which means that it has certain attachment points if you wanted to use rack time specific bags. Also comes standard with this Bibia strap. And if you wanted to, you can 
open the strap up, put a jacket or, or a bag under here and strap it in. Also work quite well with pannier bags. Now to turn the bike on, we use the Bosch Intuvia display, which is the standard display for all the Tinker bikes. Just hit the power button here. Now by default, it's gonna be in the off mode and you could see certain information by default in the screen. So one, you see the battery life. Right now it has three out of five bars. You can see that it's off. Uh, this is the assistance level and this bar as you ride will actually show you how much assistance you're using your miles per hour and then the range right now because it's off the range is nothing um, as we go up to the different assistance levels we're going to see the range change now at the moment it's showing 27 miles in eco mode eco mode is the first level of assist it's about a 50 percent boost as we go up to the next level we get about a hundred percent boost sport mode is also on this particular motor called e-mountain bike mode. Now this is an optional mode. Currently this bike is set at, and it gives you between the tour mode, which is 100%, up to turbo mode, but it's a little bit more dynamic. So it allows you just to keep this one setting, and when you don't need as much power, it's not gonna give it to you. When you need more power, as in you're climbing a steep hill, it's gonna deliver more power. Now you also note this little light icon here, and that means that the lights are on. Now, uh, this bike is set to be always on. It is possible to set it so the lights can be manually changed on and off, and you do that through this. There are some additional functions to this display as well, but I'm gonna go over some of the just basic ones right now. So with this I button, we can function through some of the different display items. Right now we're in range mode. If I hit I again, we get the odometer. Now hit the I again and we get trip distance. Now this is resettable. If I just hold the reset button down for a couple of seconds, we're going to reset the trip distance. We have the clock, max speed, the average speed. Since I just reset this, it's not showing the average speed, but it will do it from whatever your last reset point is and then the trip time as well. Again, the reset uh, button is the one that's gonna change that. If you're locking up the bike, it might be nice just to take this with you so you can keep it a little bit more secure. As I mentioned before, this is the Vario version. So it comes with the Enviolo hub and it's a NuVinci optimized. Shifting the gears, we just basically turn this knob. So this will go into the lower gear as you see this little guy on the hill. And as you get going, to go into a higher gear, you just twist it towards you. It's quite nice that you can shift from a standstill. With normal gears, you have to be pedaling to change gears. In this case, you can change the gears while you're stopped or while you're riding. We have a nice little bell here, and we have the Ergon GP1 grips, and they really support you quite well. So instead of having a grip that just goes across your hand and kind of cuts off your circulation, you have this additional ergonomic bulge here. This bike comes standard with the Tektro Auriga Comp hydraulic disc brakes. They're really quite powerful and very durable. They're metal uh, construction, they have adjustable reach, and they work quite well for this compact bike. This is the Auriga Comp caliper, and it's set up with 160 millimeter Tektro rotors front and rear, which is perfect for this size bike. And for the headlight, we have a Supernova six volt headlight and it runs right off of the Bosch system. When I turn the system on, you'll see the light come on. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed checking out this video of the Tinker. If you wanna check out some videos in the future, you should subscribe to our channel. We'll be reviewing additional bikes, telling rider stories, we might even tell some stories of people that own this bike. But if you own it, you want to maybe put some comments below, that could be really cool. Or if you ever want to check it out in person, you could stop by one of our shops. We have a store in Brooklyn, New York and Long Beach, California. But we also ship all over the country. So feel free to reach out and uh, we'll be happy to help you. So hope you have a good day.